Hello and welcome to Nep One at Home. My name is Linda. If you're brand new here, welcome, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. So today I am making some uh, tobacco vanilla black soap for my husband. It's, um, I don't use any animal fats in this recipe. You could switch out the palm oil for lard if you wanted to. You can do it entirely lard. You can do a complete bar of soap made out of lard. That's what they did for eons, uh, lard and tallow. Um, but this recipe is actually the same recipe that Royalty Soaps uses. I will include the recipe down below. It's very simple. Um, it's like five things plus lye. So it's like five oils plus lye and water, of course. Um, and then whatever, you know, if you choose to add any additives. So like fragrance oil, kaolin clay, if you wanted to use titanium dioxide, micas, anything like that that you wanted to add into it. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. It's super simple. Um, <clears throat> once you get the percentages right, it's actually, it goes really fast. Um, so yeah, I will go ahead and put that down below just so you have it in case you're curious. I would recommend a soap calculator if you're new to soaping, definitely for sure. Um, I have used a lot of different recipes, ones that I have made up. This was just a simple recipe and it works good with my husband's skin type, so that's why I use it. Um, of course, like anything else, there's tons of people making soap on YouTube. This is just my way of doing it. Um, it's probably more wrong than right. Be aware. What else? I think that's it. Um, the video is going to be voiceover just because it's so much easier for me to do the voiceover. And hopefully you don't mind all the chattiness. Uh, I think that's it. So I hope you guys like the video. And yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll let you watch. Thanks. So I am literally just trying to get everything that I need kind of organized where I want it. Um, I think here I actually start off with measuring out palm oil. And the reason why I started with the palm oil was because I was hoping I had enough to do t a double batch. And as it just so happened, I only had enough palm oil for a single batch, <clears throat> which was kind of a bummer. So once I get some more palm oil in, then I will go ahead and make up another batch for my husband. It does take like four to six weeks for the bars to cure. And he's on like his last little sliver of soap, of course, because I was waiting for all of my supplies to come in. Um, I will say that, you know, although this is not meant to be a tutorial, this is literally just me talking to you about making soap the way that I do it for my husband. I don't wear all the safety equipment that they tell you to wear. The pretty much the only thing that I do that they recommend is I I make my lie outside so it's in a well ventilated area otherwise I just really don't um, and then here I think I'm measuring out olive oil at this point and the amount of soap batter that I ended up with was like a hundred ounces so the recipe actually calls for percentages. So you have to figure out how much soap batter your mold will hold. So you have to do the math for that. And there's um, videos online that will show you how to calculate all of that out. Um, and then what else? Um, sorry, my dog is licking his leg. So I don't know if you can hear it or not, but if you hear that nasty, disgusting sound, that's Hagrid licking his leg. So from olive oil, I move on to, I think this is coconut oil. And yeah, I believe so. Because the three main oils are coconut, olive, and palm oil. And then I add in almond oil, or sweet almond oil, and castor oil. Castor oil helps with lather. Almond oil helps with like making it nice and soft for your skin. It's very nourishing. Um, look up, you know, all the different properties of the different oils for yourself. There are so many recipes out there. There are so many ways of making soap. 
Um, a lot of people do hot process, I do cold process, but I soap hot, if that makes sense. Um, and what that means is that I will actually use my lye and pour my lye in on top of my oils, so it actually melts my oils so that I don't have to melt everything first, then combine everything while it's already melted. I just simply use my lye to accomplish that goal. Um, hot process is when they use like a slow cooker or crock pot, wherever you are. Um, and they actually make their soap in that and then they actually cook the soap. It Supposedly, it makes the soap cure faster than the four to six weeks. I honestly don't know because I don't do that type of soaping. So you'd have to look that up. Um, again, this isn't a tutorial. This is just, I'm showing you what I do. And as you can see, I am not wearing gloves. Um, I don't wear goggles. I wear eyeglasses because I'm blind without them. And I am wearing an apron, but that's because I wear an apron for like pretty much everything. Um, if you are new to making soap and you tend to be a messier person, then you may want to adhere to all of these standards. I would suggest not soaping the way that I do, and I don't soap the way I do because I feel like I need to be a rebel or anything else like that. I don't wear gloves because I'm a very tactile person, and if my hands are covered and I cannot feel things with my hands, it really bothers me. And I don't know if that's because my eyesight is so bad that I rely so much on touch. I know that when working with lye, it's very caustic, so I don't touch the lye with my hands. And I also don't touch the soap, if I can help it, until it has cured. So those are just a couple of the things. Um, I have tried soaping with gloves on. It's very uncomfortable and I feel more clumsy when my hands are covered. I just wash my hands a lot. I keep vinegar next to my sink. Vinegar helps to, um, cause lye will actually burn your skin. So if you get lye or the, I guess I'll just call it the raw soap mixture because it hasn't cured yet. If you get that on your skin, it will actually burn your skin. So I just keep vinegar next to my sink and I just rinse my hands off really quickly. I'm very aware of where my hands are. I'm very aware of all, where all of my equipment is. And that's just how I soap. If you are new to soaping or you're just soaping in general, you should always follow safety standards. You know, wear eye protection. Um, some people wear hair nets and they go through all that. I'm not selling this soap. The soap is just for my husband. If I was making soap to sell, then I do take more precautions as far as like hair and what have you. Um, I did make sure that the dogs were out of the house because they like to sit under my feet while I cook, always hoping for a snack. Um, the cats are usually pretty good about staying away while I'm soaping. I don't know if it's because they know because they can smell it or what the deal is, but they tend to stay out of the kitchen when I'm soaping. Um, Ginny may come by initially just to kind of look. And as you can see, there's Hagrid's nose. Um, when I go to get the lye, that's when I let them out of the house. Right now, I'm just pouring oils. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, but once I get ready to pour the lye, I do make sure that everybody leaves the house. But like I said, Ginny came by, I think, and she wanted to like know what I was doing. And then once she figured out that I wasn't making food, she didn't care anymore. Um, she's a fantastic sous chef, but she is not much of a help when it comes to soaping, which is fine. Um, I think that's pretty much it. What else can I tell you? Oh, um, I tend to use, uh, a lot of food grade oils. So like my coconut oil and my, was it coconut and olive oil? Sorry, I had to think about it for a second. Come from Sam's Club. They have a really good price on it and they'll actually ship it to my house. And since we have... A Sam's Club membership they ship for free um, for the type of membership that we have so that works out well uh, bulk apothecary is where I get the almond oil and the castor oil it's also where I get my palm oil they have a really good price on palm oil I will have to check since I made this batch, because the only two oils I had to buy to make this soap, this go around was coconut and olive oil. I wanted to make sure I had enough um, because I use food grade oils. I don't want to actually have to use my olive oil that I use for cooking to make this soap. They're 
interchangeable, really. But <clears throat> regardless, it's what I did. Um, let's see. I think that was almond and then I do caster that I'm pouring in. So anyhow, so I ordered those from Sam's Club. Those come in. It is what it is. Um, and Bulk Apothecary also is where I like to buy my fragrance oils if I'm going to use fragrance oils. They have uh, really good quality oils. They also have, I can't remember how they call them. They're essential oil blends. And so they actually have fragrance oils that are made just with essential oils that you can use. Um, one of the things that you're going to probably, once you start soaping, soaping is not a cheap hobby, just to throw that out there. It's not a cheap hobby, especially when you have to, when you're first starting, you have to gather up all of your different um, oils, butters, what have you. Um, and then you have to find suppliers and such that you trust. It's like anything else. If you can afford to buy like huge quantities, then you're going to save more money. I don't have space to do that in my home. So there's no way that I could find a spot to put like 50 gallons of oil somewhere. There's just, it's never going to happen. Not in this house. So to that end, I do buy as I need. Um, at bulk and I am not sponsored by bulk apothecary or anything else like that I just like their product they have really excellent quality um, oils they have really excellent quality butters um, their fragrance and essential oils are awesome for soaping now I use different essential oils for my family and like on my own skin and like if I'm using like just straight essential oils I use Young Living, but if I'm using for like to make soap or whatever, I don't mind using um, therapeutic grade or um, cosmetic grade because there is going to be some tweaking that happens. I think I don't know that this is a fact, but in the saponification process, because you're adding the lye into the butters and the oils and the fats, basically, and there is going to be a chemical process that happens, which is called saponification, which is how you make soap. So I feel like during that process, I don't know that it degrades the oils. I just feel like it changes them a little bit. So I don't feel like it's just there to make things smell good personally. I know that there's a lot of uh, benefits to essential oils. Um, whether that comes through in the soap at the end of the day, I have no idea. I know it makes them smell good, but regardless. So in this particular batch, I am using a fragrance oil. It's a fragrance oil that my husband enjoys. I try really hard to get away from chemicals in the home. However because I am making the soap and because I trust my supplier and they disclose on their website like what things that they are adding. Um, I just, they have really good, great quality products and so I trust them for that. Um, if you watch here, you will see that I just got done dumping my lye in and I don't know if you could tell that it was like really hot. I wish there was like a way that had like steam vision or something, but it was actually quite warm and it actually does begin to really um, heat up everything and it starts to melt my oils. Um, one thing that I did do with this batch that was, I don't know what I was thinking to be honest with you. So the biggest problem was that, and you'll see this when I start to stick blend, I way over blended this. I don't know why. I think I was just worried that it wasn't going to reach trace because it's trace is one of those funny things. Like you have to see when the oils and the lye have combined, you won't see that soft skim of oil any longer on top. And I literally stick blended all of my additives and I should have put everything in at the same time. I should have put the charcoal in with the kaolin clay and then just stick blended once. But no, 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 I got impatient and I just, I started stick blending, which normally doesn't seem like it'd be that big of a deal, except that in this case, because I had added kale and clay and I added activated charcoal, it really sped up the processing, I guess, or whatever. And so my soap really, um, thickens a lot and you'll see that in a little bit when I go to pour 
just how wonderfully thick it got. So there's that. And so here I am trying to retrace. And if you look kind of at the edges of the container, you can kind of see where there's still that skim of oil on the top. And that's what I'm actually trying to get rid of. And so I just kept stick blending. And I should have just gone to using the um, spatula. So here I am adding the kale and clay, which um, there's a lot of different benefits to kale and clay. I suggest looking them up. Um, there's a reason why kale and clay is used in a lot of beauty products. That's all I can say. And the reason why a lot of people that you see on YouTube or anywhere that do soaping videos, whether it be tutorials or just telling you what they do, the reason why they can't tell you all the properties is because here in the U.S. the FDA won't allow us to say what kinds of glorious things that these will do for your skin because I feel like they think they've cornered the market on healthcare. So... Anywho, um, adding the activated charcoal now. This stuff is so messy. Oh my goodness. Like, yeah, it's messy stuff. It's incredible stuff. And it um, also has a lot of great properties to it as well. And I think most people are aware that um, deodorizing is one of them. So this I definitely should have just used the spatula for because I feel like I was just making more of a mess. But, no, 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 I went ahead and used that stick blender instead. And here I am adding in my oils. Um, and then I just kind of continue on with the processing. Now the oil, the fragrance oil did kind of help loosen things up a little bit, but it wasn't long lasting because I just beat the tar out of the soap. Normally you don't want to beat it quite this much and you would want to go back to just using just your spatula, but... Me being me, and it's been a while since I made soap, to be honest, so I guess I forgot just how much everything was going to speed up when I went to make this. Um, so, yeah. I do have two separate stick blenders. I have one that I use all the time for cooking, and then I have one that I use just for soap. Granted, we use soap to clean our dishes. I wash everything after I'm done with the whole soaping thing, but I still have a separate set of tools, if you will, for soaping and um and that's because i feel like when you do so when you make soap um like especially underneath the blade of your stick blender it's really hard a lot of times to make sure you get all the soap out from under there and the last thing you want to do is make some mashed potatoes and have them come out tasting like your soap i just think that's kind of gross um so here you can see just how thick the soap batter got on me and yeah it was Kind of like pouring tar out of a bucket, I'd imagine. But, yeah. So, this patch made 100 ounces, and my mold actually holds, like, I want to say 96 or 98 ounces normally. And so, normally, it would not actually reach to over the top. And it did kind of, like, there was kind of, like, a, a raised-up area. Luckily, it was thick enough that it didn't run all over the place, but it was a lot of soap. Which is good. But... Um, I did have to get kind of creative with getting the last of the soap from the container and on actually into the mold. And then you don't see it on camera, but I actually take it and I actually like thump it on the ground several times to try and get any air bubbles out. This soap had thickened up enough on, um, it had thickened up enough on me that you'll see when I go to cut the soap that there were still air bubbles. Um, this would have been a super big bummer, um, had I been wanting to sell this soap, but it's really not a biggie. My husband could care less. He just likes the soap. Um, and yeah, so I don't bother burning the chopstick around the edges or anything else like that. I just kind of uh, wiped up. So it was kind of cleaned up a little bit. And then here I am texturing the top a little bit to kind of help with the fact that there was so much soap inside this mold. Um, like I said, I do love this recipe. I think it's a super easy recipe. And it makes a great bar. It really does. It lathers beautifully. It's soft. It makes your skin feel good. It's just an all-around great bar. Um, so I did the texturing there. And then you're going to see me spray this with some rubbing alcohol. It's like 91% alcohol. You can use vodka. You can use whatever you want. But rubbing alcohol helps it to keep from getting all ashy on the top as it saponifies from the lye. 
and then I'm gonna put it to bed for the night in the oven because I didn't have any place else to put it. Okay, so now that the soap is uh, to bed, basically, it's gonna be sleeping the night away in the oven. I had to make sure I put a note on the oven door that there's soap in there so that none of us start the oven to preheat for anything. I'm planning on um, a dinner that doesn't require the oven, so that should be good. Um, so I know soaping isn't really kind of like, I don't know, everything, everybody's thing, and that's cool. I like making soap. I love to make soap, actually, and I've made it for a long time. I love the fact that my husband prefers my soap to store-bought brands, and um, he's always been super supportive. I just, I love the fact that he loves my soap. Um, like I've said before, you know, this one does have a fragrance oil in it. You don't have to put a fragrance oil in it. It doesn't have to smell like anything. I mean, it could just smell like the oils and whatever. Um, I have made lots of unscented bars. I've used essential oils in soaps. It gives it a really subtle fragrance, um, which I think a lot of people are so used to, like the heavily perfumey soaps of like, you know, Irish Spring or Dial or whatever brand you like. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of surprised that when you soap and use essential oils, and I don't know if it's because of the saponification process or what, but a lot of times it really kind of just dulls down the scents, which is fine because soap is meant to get you clean. And the, the fragrance of it is really secondary. Um, but he does like this fragrance. It's actually very similar to um, the cologne that he wears. So I love it on him. Um, but it's the activated charcoal that really kind of helps with everything I think because activated charcoal is great for deodorizing and all that kind of stuff so you can look up all of these amazing properties of like different essential oils that you could use different additives like kaolin clay or charcoal look those up for yourself the FDA here in the US doesn't like us to say them but whatever um so it's a fun hobby um I have sold some it's actually a very expensive hobby to be honest with you so um, if you enjoy making things if you enjoy crafting if you enjoy making your own body products soap is definitely um, an easy one okay so it's the next day and I am actually um, unmolding the soap and then you're gonna get to watch me cut the soap um, as I was saying before like soaping is easy but I mean, I've been making soap for a really long time, so compared to a lot of other things, it's fairly simple. Once you have your recipe and you know what you're doing and you're aware of the dangers involved in using things like lye, and you just, you have to apply a lot of common sense, basically. So, um, it is easy, yes, but with good common sense and good practices. So, this is me making sure that my measurement is right. This is actually a handmade soap. Um, cutter that my husband made for me. That's a guitar string and I have the ability to like tighten or loosen the string as I need to. Um, is it as pretty as you'll see a lot of other people using like on, um, you know, royalty soaps or apple berry or whatever? No, but it works and my husband made it for me and I love it. <clears throat> just like he's made all of my soap molds for me. Soaping for me is truly just a hobby. It's not like a career choice or anything like that. So it would not make sense for me to invest, you know, a few hundred dollars into soap cutters when I make soap just a few times a year. Um, as I said in the other part, you know, I have sold soap before and I'm trying to get things out of the way so it's easier. Um, I have sold soap previously, but, you know, it's mostly to family and friends and, um, that's pretty much it. Now, if you look at the bar, like you can kind of see where like the little pitting is and stuff. And that's because the soap had thickened up so much that it left a lot of air pockets. So even after I thunked it on the ground a few times, it still left air in the soap. And so that's what the air pockets are. So I cut these bars um, to the size that my husband likes. They make nice big bars. Um, I think they weigh like six ounces each or something six or eight ounces I don't remember but um, by the time I am all done it made 16 bars I believe I know I count them here in a little bit I've been pretty sure it's 16 uh, 16 nice big chunky bars for my husband um, I don't bother to trim them up or anything else like that we just you know it's, it's a homemade soap it does the purpose of getting him clean. He likes the smell of it. That's all that, you know, is basically required. Now, these will sit um, curing in my, what I call my soaping cabinet for s four to six weeks, roughly. 
and then 16 bars should last him probably pretty close to a year and yeah that's pretty much it so um yeah so if you like these kinds of videos if you like soaping videos or um any other kind of crafts and stuff i do all kinds of things youtube for me is literally a hobby as well but it's also a place where i get to document all the weird things i like to do in life as well as all my collections um so yeah if you like these videos like comment subscribe do all the fun things it really helps my channel a lot i'm super excited because the channel continues to grow which is exciting um, mostly just because it's nice knowing that people actually enjoy this weird random stuff that I do and the re weird random things that I like as well, which is nice. Um, I have a few more videos coming out and there they are in their glory, all 16 of them. You can see little swirls of kale and clay in there mixed in with the charcoal. And that's okay. I don't mind that. They do leave little weird fingerprints though. All right. Remember to collect what you love, love what you collect. And thank you guys so much for being here. And until next time. Bye!